In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips for recording cinematic video with any interchangeable lens camera. Now, I just wanna throw all five of these tips at you, and whether you choose to do one or all of these, I'd recommend looking into each one separately and researching more in depth on each one to figure out what works best for you, because in this video, I'm just gonna throw all these at you and let you kind of decide which one would work best for you in whatever situation you're in. Either way, I'm not here to waste your time. Let's get right into tip number one. So the first tip is to use vintage lenses. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love vintage lenses and I pretty much talk about them any chance that I get. But the reason I recommend using vintage lenses is because they typically give this really unique look to your video. They're typically not as sharp as modern glass and they have a lot of imperfections. Having strange looking bokeh that isn't perfectly circular, you know, a little bit more flaring coming in from the light. Even like a slightly hazy texture that some vintage lenses produce all kind of come together to make your video look really interesting and really just look more like film versus digital. Now when it comes to which types of vintage lenses to choose from, there are literally thousands of different lenses you could choose from. So I'd recommend doing a lot more research to figure out which ones you need and which ones work best for you. But as a general rule of thumb, Canon FD lenses are great. Those are my favorite vintage lenses to use. Super Tacomar lenses are amazing as well. And then also Nikon AI and AIS lenses are awesome lenses as well. And next up onto tip number two, and this is to use a mist filter. So there's a bunch of different types of mist filters you can use. The Tiffin Black Pro Mist is the most popular, and then there's just a bunch of other brands that make their own versions of that. I'll link the Tiffin Black Pro Mist down below, as well as the one that I use, which is the Freewell Variable ND Mist Package. This is an awesome all-in-one package that has a mist filter built in. But like I said, there's a bunch of different mist filters you can choose from, but these kind of do a similar thing as vintage lenses and they get rid of a little bit of the sharpness they decrease the contrast just a little bit and almost give your footage this really slight like hazy look to it and they make the highlights bloom a lot more and they just make your footage look really good it kind of just add some imperfection to your footage, just like vintage lenses kind of do. And I really don't know how else to explain these, but they just make your footage look really like creamy and cinematic and good. And they're just another thing that I really recommend looking into and using to help get cinematic footage. All right, tip number three, this is a quick one. And this is to decrease the saturation, sharpness, and contrast inside of your camera. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. It's kind of different with every camera brand, but basically just find a way to get into your color profile of your camera and just decrease the saturation, sharpness, and contrast just by a little bit. And this is gonna make your footage look a lot more flat coming out of the camera. But then what you're gonna do is bring it into your editing software and either you can apply a LUT to your footage or just go into your color correcting tools with your editing software and just adjust the saturation and contrast to really get the look down to exactly what you want for whatever you're recording. This more flat footage just makes it really easy to pretty much adjust it to however you need it whether you want something that's really bright and punchy and saturated, or if you want something more dark and desaturated and more like grimy of a feel, you really just have a lot more room to adjust these colors when you do decrease the saturation and sharpness and contrast in your camera and decide what you wanna do with it after you're done filming. On to tip number four, this is another quick one. This is to build out a more heavy, bigger camera rig. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this, ranging from just adding a cage to your camera all the way to 15 millimeter rods, a V-mount battery and all this other stuff have to add more weight and heft to your camera rig. But kind of the goal of doing this is to make your handheld footage less shaky and get rid of some of those micro jitters on your footage. Because typically when you just have your camera and your lens and you just hold it and record something, it's really gonna look shaky. And have this stuff called micro jitters that are just really like small and fast jitters that are pretty much just caused from having a really light camera that just pretty much moves along with your hands really easily. But most cinema camera rigs are a lot heavier and so even when you record handheld with these rigs, the footage is gonna look a lot smoother and just look better. It'll still look handheld and you'll be able to tell it's handheld and that's you know a style that a lot of people like to have, but it won't look amateur and really jittery like what you'd have by just holding just your camera and a lens together when it's super light. So like I said, there is a bunch of different ways to do this, ranging from just putting a cage in your camera to add a little bit of weight and better grip to it, all the way to building out a full huge rig with your camera. So I recommend looking into this more, of course, and deciding what you'd prefer and what works best for you. But again, this is pretty much only if you wanna shoot handheld as well. If you're putting it on a tripod, it really won't make any difference. All right, onto the last tip. Tip number five is to try to backlight your subject. So lighting is one of the most important factors for getting good looking footage. Footage. And something as simple as having the light directly in front of your subject facing right towards it versus having a backlit subject with the light behind them. This can make a huge difference in your shot and just having a backlit subject can add a lot more depth to your footage and just make it look really good. A lot of times this is done with the sunset. So having the sun kind of backlight your subject during the sunset is what a lot of people do, but even just 
whatever lighting you use. If you have a hard light just backlighting your subject, this can make your footage look really good, but of course this one really depends on the style of footage you're trying to get and definitely cannot be used all the time. But it's definitely something to think about, something to try out if you're trying to get a shot looking like that. But that's it for five tips to help you record cinematic footage. Like I said, you can implement either one of these or all of them to help get you better looking footage. With a lot of these, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, a bunch of different brands and a bunch of different things you can do to implement these tips. So definitely look into all these more. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this and if it helped you out, go down to the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.